you see, the contemplation is not about you becoming, you know, more enlightened or you becoming more peaceful or you becoming uh, more in control of the situations. It's about waking up from from the you. Let's see. It's not about fixing the you or serving the you or adjusting the you or having a better you. It's about waking up from the you, just from from the you dream, from the me dream to the reality of consciousness, the reality of the reality of what they refer to as the self of the capital S or the reality of Brahman, the reality of consciousness. So it's not a practice, you know, contemplation, it's not a practice. It's contemplation is just a, a direct exploration, a direct looking, a direct inquiry, looking directly. At your experience, you know, in a certain way, looking at your experience. And noticing, noticing. Noticing that uh, you know the world, body, mind, body sensation, world, body, mind. Uh, are experiences that come and go, but you don't. You don't. It's, it's already so. It's already. It 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 is so. It's, that's how it is. You as consciousness, there is no place where, where that where consciousness starts and ends. There isn't a place where it starts. You cannot say, "Oh, it starts here." And it doesn't start at my house or something. You cannot say that. It doesn't have like a starting place. It doesn't start in the morning when you wake up and and ends when you when you go to sleep. What starts when you wake up is is the world and thoughts. And when you go to sleep, during that deep sleep, what ends is thoughts and, and the body dissolves. So these are appearances. The appearances. Now, there is an ignorance, meaning ignorance of, of consciousness, the impression is when the when the world, meaning perceptions, dissolve, and when the bodily sensation dissolves, such as in deep sleep, and when the mind dissolves, such as in deep sleep, that consciousness dissolves. That's the belief in, in, in ignorance. That consciousness dissolves. Because in ignorance, the consciousness is equated to the world is is equated to the world body mind. There isn't a recognition that the world body mind arise in consciousness and they shift, they change the ultimate consciousness does not. It's imagined and believed that consciousness is the mind, is the world body mind. And that when the world body mind dissolves, consciousness dissolves. And so there is this fear that oh my god, that when the body will die then and the brain, you know, will atrophy. I mean, maybe no more thoughts and no more bodily sensations, no more perceptions. No, the instrument will atrophy. You know, the binoculars will break. That consciousness will will dissolve. That's. But consciousness isn't in the realm of the world body mind. The world body mind, perceptions, sensations are in consciousness, appear in consciousness. Like thoughts 
by pure consciousness. But when, the, when you look, when you consider there are two thoughts, for example, thought A and thought B, right? Be between thought A and thought B, there has to be s s some gap. Let's call it a gap. Because if, if there was no gap between thought A and thought, and thought B, thought A and thought B would be, would be without a gap, and there would be one thought. You, you couldn't express them as thought A and thought B. Thought A being, I love New York City. Thought B is, gee, I, I've got a, a, a white Labrador at home. So, so here are two thoughts. There's a gap between the thoughts. So what is this gap? You can't say it's nothing. It is true that it's not a thing, meaning it's not a thought. Because if it was a thought, then thought A and thought B would be connected by thought C. And so thought A. A and thought B and thought C would be one thought because they're connected. So it's obviously not a thought, but it's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's through this gap, because of this gap, that thought A and thought B appear. You know, like the words on a page. It's because of the blank space in between those. Uh, imprints, the dark imprints on the, on the page, it's through that space that these words are appearing. If you can flip your vision and see the space instead of seeing the, the words, you will see, oh my God, it's mostly space. This page that I'm reading is mostly, it's a blank sheet of, uh, blank, uh, sheet of paper with, well, it depends how small the print is. Sometimes they have those prints that you need, like, a binoculars to see them. Yeah, but, but in general, just, you see that it's mostly space, you see. And this space is not nothing. You see? So what I'm pointing to is that the consciousness in the absence of form. Absence of form is not the absence of consciousness. It's just the absence of form. And the fact is, this, what we refer to consciousness, this gap between two thoughts that allows these two thoughts, it's not just between those thoughts, those two thoughts, it also permeates them. Permeates them. How? Because you cannot perceive this thought A without what holds it, without its substance. Not its substance. What holds thought A is that very space that is between thought A and thought B. It, it doesn't just hold it, it permeates it. It's made, the thought is made out of that. Because the reality of the thought phenomenon, and as well as the gap, is. And, and the next phenomenon, the next thought, is consciousness. Is the gap itself. The, 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 the reality of all phenomenal events is consciousness, but also consciousness is its own reality. And knows itself directly without form. As well as with form. It knows itself with form and as well as without form. Consciousness knows itself directly in the absence of form. You can simply ask yourself, am I conscious? And the immediate answer, without you thinking, you don't need to think about it, are, am I conscious? It's like asking, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Are you conscious? Yeah, I'm conscious. You know, <laughs> ask me something, I mean, ask me something, ask me, you know, some algorithm. Let me think about it. Am I conscious? Yeah. I mean, where are you from? Of course, I'm conscious. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like it's it's a no-brainer. Why it's a no-brainer? Because it doesn't need a brain. It doesn't need a mind. Consciousness does not need a mind to know itself. The mind needs consciousness to figure out the two plus three equals five.
It's a no brainer. <laughs> I like that expression, no brainer. Yeah, you know, the brain is it's appropriate, isn't it? Perfect. It's perfect. <laughs>